but I don't think if you were, what's all about a shuttlecock? The badminton? Uh, badminton? I, I don't think badminton elbow is intense. That might be like, <laughs> so a tennis elbow might be severe, badminton elbow might be like, eh, not so bad. <laughs> Signs and symptoms is, it's going to be inflamed, right? So it's inflammation of the extensor muscles, overuse, like tennis, golf, throwing, hammering, um, like plucking chickens, in your repetitive motion. That's what you guys do next to your time. <laughs> Ache that progresses to pain or pain use, tenderness on palpation, so you can actually feel it. How do we test for this? We're going to do an x-ray to make sure there's no fractures or anything like that. Can you see inflammation on the next ray No, but you can rule out other things, right? So bursitis versus tendonitis. What is bursitis? Where are your bursa? Where are bursa? Like yeah, it's like the sacs in your joints. Yeah. All right. So bursitis is like from a trauma or repetitive stress. You can get bursitis from rheumatoid arthritis or gout, and you can use an MRI or ultrasound to confirm like a deep bursitis. Bursitis gets better with like rest, ice, non-steroid anti-inflammatories or corticosteroids. So bursitis is common in the shoulder, bursitis is common in the hips, all right? From trauma or repetitive stress. Tendonitis shows inflammation and damage. So it's thickening and scarring of the tendons. So is this bursitis or tendonitis? Tendonitis? Thickening and scarring. Inflammation, thickening and scarring. Tendonitis. Doc, is there something wrong with my elbow? Hold on, let me get the camera. All right, carpal tunnel syndrome. What's carpal tunnel syndrome? You guys have all heard of like, what is the Brown Hand Institute and the non, the laser carpal tunnel surgeries and everything like that. What's carpal tunnel syndrome? What happens? Or chicken fucking sleep. I mean, when I was driving truck, I mean, all of a sudden I could be doing anything and all of a sudden, from my elbow down, I could just go to sleep. I couldn't feel anything. Sometimes both. While you're driving? No, it never happened to me when I was driving. 70 miles an hour down the road with a big ring and you're driving. One time it happened to me when I was eating breakfast. Both. I couldn't even pick up my silverware. And it's just... And I was like, boy, I hope nobody's watching me. <laughs> Luckily, you didn't have carpal tunnel syndromes while you had, like, Bell's palsy. Because then you'd be drilling on one side of your mouth and you'd be able to pick up your silverware. That's just a horrible combination. Okay, where's, so your carpal tunnel, what's, carpal bones are where? In your wrist. So where's your carpal tunnel? Right here. Right? Your carpal tunnel is right here. So carpal tunnel syndromes are from here forward. All right? So if your hand is going numb, and it's affecting, it's going from your wrist forward, that's the carpal tunnel. Okay, it's usually from like repetitive use, like typing, especially the old typewriters. Now, like texting, people are having a hard time texting because they overdevelop their thumb muscle and it starts to put pressure, that muscle starts to put pressure in the tunnel. But what happens is they call it carpal tunnel because there's a very little space in here for all these nerves and bones to go through. So the more closed our hand is, the more pressure we have on that, on that nerve that goes through there. And which nerve is this usually? What does it usually affect? Does it affect your, your whole hand or this part of it? So it's, it's your thumb and your first two fingers. Which nerve is that? Medium. Medium nerve. What's the little fingers and the ring finger? What nerve is that? All in our nerve. Okay, so which nerve do you, when you hit your funny bone, which nerve do you hit? All in our nerve. Where's the pain usually radiate down to? Could go all the way down to your small finger. Okay, all the way to the little finger. That's your ulnar nerve. The carpal tunnel is the median nerve. So it's pressure the median nerve at the wrist. Is it painful? It's, it's either painful or it's numb. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's totally different. It's painful. So you can't have it. It's yep. Once you're driving, it always hurts. Though. Yeah, because the closer your hand is and gripping the wheel and stuff like that, always happens. So, Overwork, repetitive work, and what happens is that there's thickening of the muscles in there and inflammation of the tendons, and the more that the more you try to cram in that tunnel, the less room there is for that nerve to work effectively. 
So usually this affects females greater than males. Uh, tingling, tingling, numbness in the hands and wrists. It's on the palm side, not the little finger. Symptoms often occur at night. So they treat this with night splints. Like they'll have these little splints that they have you wear to bed so that your hand is open while you're sleeping. So you don't like, some people just, you know, will crunch up at night and get their little blankie. <laughs> and when they do that, it, it cuts off that nerve so there's not room. You know it. <laughs> you got your teddy bear, all those things, your, your gun, you know, everything else up there, just in case. Um, so loss of grip strength, and you're gonna also notice that the thumb muscles start to wear away. So if there's atrophy in the, in the, in the base of the thumb, that's usually a sure sign that it's progressed, it's the carpal tunnel is really bad. So what have they done in the past for carpal tunnel syndrome? Like why is Brown's Hand Institute always advertising that they do a safer and more effective carpal tunnel surgery? What do they used to do? Oh, they used to cut it, now they do it left. Lap yeah, they used to cut, you know, they used to cut your wrist and a pretty, you know, it'd go through that sheath and try to clean out whatever was in there. If there was, you know, um, any arthritic change or degeneration and then they closed you back up and then what happens always post-surgery? Not always, actually, not always. No. Scar tissue and what? So now we have scar tissue that's also trying to jam itself into this little tunnel in here. So that's why people would have it over and over again. So that's why, like, when you hear the Brown Hands Institute, you know, like, I think they even say that the old carpal tunnel surgery started in 1947 and it hasn't changed since. And so all they do is go in there with, like, laparoscopic and they go in there and clean it out and there's less scarring. And the less scarring, the better chance you have in a, a possible remission of this. And I'm not, by any means, today's lecture is not, or, uh, lecture is not sponsored by Brown Hand Institute. So, <laughs> clinical Tunnel's test and Phelan's test. What you do is you tap the wrist right here, and if that causes numbness or pain, that is positive. Okay, that's pretty much all you gotta do. Well, what's that? Sorry. If you just tap right there. Which test is that? On your carpal tunnel. Right in the carpal tunnel. That's the pinnal test. I think so. It's one of them. I don't look it up. <laughs> nerve conduction test. Same thing. They're gonna put. They're gonna check the nerve impulse from your hand up. And if that impulse gets stopped right there, then they know that it's carpal tunnel. Uh, surgery, okay, that is Phelan's? Yeah. Okay, so that's a great stretch anyways. Right? When you guys are on the computer all the time, especially when you're on your laptops, we talked about the importance of raising the monitor. That's T. That's, why, is we that's why I thought. So T is tapping. Okay, T is tapping. <laughs> Tindles, tapping. Phelan's is you go palms together. This is Phelan's, and what's that doing when we do that? Is it pinching that nerve in there? Yeah. So this is a great stretch. Can you guys feel that stretching on your forearms? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go like this. This will be our new side. So if you've been typing a lot, I can't feel and then you can do a prayer sign also, and push do down, this. and stretch, keep your hands together and stretch. That's a great way to stretch like your forearm muscles. To keep them loose. <laughs> so nerve conduction test. The trigger for this is surgery. They can cut the ligament. They can do loom. Physiotherapy. The wrist splinting. They do at night while they're sleeping. Carpal tunnel in 1999. This is showing that the most median days away from work from carpal tunnel syndrome were greater than any other work-related injury. So longer than fracture of bone, longer than becoming amputated. Like if you if you have an amputation at work, you're back in 18 days. Carpal tunnel, 27. Hmm. If you have your choice, choose carpal tunnel. <laughs> Tendonitis, about nine days of work. I can, you know what? I want to beat this guy right here because <laughs> obviously they didn't work the system good enough. Um, if you lose your guts or have lots of oh, cuts. <laughs> lacerations, it's three days. <laughs> Look like guts for a second. Carpal tunnel, 27 days. Yeah, I used to work at In-N-Out doing heat exercises and I did it for civil war times in order to raise the heat. To do that? Nice. For the, because you're doing the potatoes and all those kind of... Anything, like all you're doing is like one movement. All of the time.
see this. Um, when, I was, when I was in practice in New York, I took care of, uh, I did like workman's comp. And so you always try to do these like seminars on how to, you know, how to prevent work-related injuries. And um, there's always like, you can always do little things like the, I don't know if it was the Department of Defense, one of the government offices had a thing where they put a program in everyone's computer because when you're working on a computer, you lose track of time. Like if you're, you know, in, in, like if you guys are studying patho and all, you're going over these slides, the next thing you know, it's like, holy cow, I've been studying for six straight hours. Why do you guys lose time? It's like six minutes? It seemed like six hours. Um, but as you're going through it, so this thing would pop up, and it was like this little thing that was like, you know, um, Microsoft Word, they used to have that little paper clip. And if you had it, if you wanted to help, the paper clip would come in and form like a bicycle. And yeah, I, I don't, that was cool. <laughs> Right, because we just come in and do like, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Doggy, you can change yeah. Dog. yeah, so um, they had one that was like a little coach. And I think they had it timed so like it was every like 40 some minutes that this little coach would blow a whistle and it would give these people two stretches to do. And they had to like do the stretches and then click off the button before they could continue with the work. Now if they didn't know, they couldn't tell whether or not these people actually were clicking on the button and getting all those stretches. Some people to do it. But, they weren't doing it and they had carpal tunnel, then what did it just do? Prevented them from workman's comp from being liable for their injuries. So those little stretches like that, that's what they're doing yeah. is they're making it so they're not liable for those injuries because you're like, why did you have carpal tunnel? So I worked here, I'm like, well, were you doing your stretches every morning that we showed you? You know, were you, were you, did you read your in and out manual? Patricia asked my grandma, she works at like IBM and Honeywell, she works there Yeah, there's, and they always, um, there used to be this, there was a movie years ago, it's like in the 80s called Gung Ho, and it was kind of funny because they, like the, I don't know if they were different. Did you ever see that movie? No. Uh, they came in like it was, I don't know, maybe like the Chinese company bought like an American automobile manufacturing thing. And like every day, all the Chinese workers would be out there doing like exercises and stuff. And all the Americans would be like smoking cigarettes and drinking beer before they went to work. And uh, like they never got hurt. And they, like they had to increase the product productivity. So, if you're hurt, you're not working, you're less productive. So now, like, toward, as the movie went on, they had to make so many cars or they're gonna lose their plants. So, like everyone's out there doing their stretches and everything, it was kind of funny, but it's all those little things that can prevent things like carpal tunnel, it's just prevention. The little things that you can do. Um, those split keyboards, you guys ever seen those split keyboards? I, I type one finger at a time, so that, that I, could, I could use like just random letters on a desk and I type just as fast as I do now. But those, <laughs> those split keyboards are designed for like people with carpal tunnel. Um, I've never seen them. You've never seen those where like instead of the board going straight across, it's like split into two sections? Oh, I've seen like an earthworm. Yeah, where and there's like a break in between. So that way they're typing. So there's it puts their arms in a more comfortable position. Now one of the things with truck drivers is they found it's not always carpal tunnel, but what happens is it's radial nerve because they're resting their elbow on the, like if you're resting your elbow on the window of the car, and yeah. then you're, you'll do that, and then it'll do the same thing on the armrest of like a, a chair. So if you're working at, a, at your desk and you've got the armrest and you're resting your elbow, that's not carpal tunnel because that's more like hitting your ulnar nerve and you're gonna have the little finger paralysis. And then you shave it out and it gets better. But carpal tunnel is gonna be through the palm, it's gonna be the thumb, it's gonna be your C6 spinal nerve, Burger's disease, I guess this is our last one. Or throm who wants to pronounce that? Thromboangitis obliterans with two eyes. Good spelling word. Thromboangitis obliterans. Burger's disease. Burger's disease is what? Burger's disease is just vascular disease for extremities. It's where you start to lose blood flow to the extremities. We have some good pictures of some toes coming up here. Uh, Cause is 12 to 20 for 100,000, so it's pretty rare. They have no idea why this really happens. It could be a genetic component with sensitivity to tobacco. So what are these patients most likely gonna be in a case study? Smokers, Smokers okay? Strongly associated with tobacco use. Uh, why with tobacco use? Does tobacco use affect our respiratory rate at all? Yeah, so these people could have been predisposed and then it's always gonna affect the extremities where we have the hardest time getting oxygen and blood flow too. Um, death is rare. 43% of these patients continue to smoke. Uh, one or more amputations in seven and a half years. So Berger's disease 
have you guys noticed that anti-smoking commercials on TV now? There's a commercial where there's a lady, and I think she's in bed, and she just had like her second leg amputated, and I think she's might be like in her 50s, and it's talking, yeah, no. you're, you're like, oh, uh, great commercial, you need to go find another pack. But it's like she's from Burger's disease. You know, it's, they relate it to smoking, but what she really had was Burger's disease, and she starts losing circulation to her extremities. Raynaud phenomena is a little different. What's Raynaud phenomena? You guys ever heard of that? Raynaud is where your hands and feet are always cold. So, you know that? They say, what do they say? Cold hands, warm heart? Or warm Raynaud's disease. So, but you just have a little less circulation going through. Um, this, you're gonna have pain in the muscles due to decreased oxygen. The testing for this, first of all, you're gonna see how long you've been smoking. Um, the second year, look at the distal extremities, look for ischemia, look for like blood flow, like you can squeeze the fingers and see how fast the blood flow comes back in. Look for ulcers, gangrene buildup, and you wanna rule out other diseases. But here's Burger's disease. Like what's missing there? is you're, you're going to see it like it's, you can hear the blood flowing. Doppler is you can hear the blood flowing through. The last one, thrombophobitis, and this is inflammation due to, a, due to a blood clot. It's usually caused by people that are immobile, uh, varicose veins, obesity, smoker, cancer. Signs and symptoms of this are, it's asymptomatic, you don't know it's there. Sometimes, sometimes there's swelling, heat, because that blood flow is in there, there's an embolism, typically your lower extremity. What does this sound like? Pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism. Where does they, where do they come from? Oh. Lower extremity, work the way up. Doppler ultrasound, again, you're gonna be able to hear the blood flow, or a D-dimer test, where they find these protein-formed clots. Protein is formed after the clots are in there. It checks for too much coagulation of the blood. Awesome, so that is all of module 13. Okay, so module 13, pre-mod, I didn't open the box accidentally. You might want to turn off the recorder.